had to arrive at a verdict. Yes, sir. If you will hand it to the bailiff, the bailiff will bring the verdict to me for my review. Verdict form is the verdict is in proper form to be received by the court. At this time, I'm going to ask the clerk to publish the verdict. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. In the Superior Court of Cobb County, State of Georgia, State of Georgia versus Dustin Ross Harris, defendant, case number 4093124, verdict form. We, the jury, find as follows. Count one, malice murder. As to count one, we define find the defendant guilty to the 14th day of November, 2016, killed only four persons, count two, felony murder, as to count two, we find the defendant guilty to the 14th day of November, 2014, killed only four persons, count three, felony murder, as to count three, we find the defendant guilty to the 14th day of November, 2016, two again, four persons, Count four, cruelty to children in the first degree. As to count four, we find the defendant guilty to the 14th day of November, 2016, and four persons. Count five, cruelty to children in the second degree. As to count five, we find the defendant guilty to the 14th day of November, 2016, and four, four persons. Count six, criminal attempts to commit a felony to which sexual exploitation of children as to count six, we find the defendant guilty of this 14th day of November, 2016. and four persons. Count seven, dissemination of harmful materials to minors. As to count seven, we find the defendant guilty of this 14th day of November, 2016. and four persons. Count eight, dissemination of harmful materials to minors. As to count eight, we find the defendant guilty of this 14th day of November, 2016. and four persons. Council approach to review the verdict. Does the state have further of the jury? No, Your Honor. Does the defense? We'll ask for a poll. Certainly. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we've received your verdict and it's been published in open court. The next step uh, in a trial uh, is the poll of the jury. The poll of the jury is when uh, you're called upon to confirm that the verdict that has been rendered by the jury is in fact your verdict. The way I'll do that is the clerk will call your names by initials shortly. When your, name, your initials are called, please stand, and I will ask you three questions. I'll ask you if you heard the verdict as it was read in open court, and then you would answer whatever your answer may be. The next thing I would ask is if the, um, then I will ask you if the um, uh, verdict that you heard is in fact the verdict that you had in your jury room. Then I'll ask you if, in fact, the verdict uh, that you heard is the verdict of all the jurors in the jury room. And finally, I will ask you if the verdict is still your verdict. And then, uh, as you know, you're under oath. To all of those four questions, you would add, answer truthfully as the case might be as to what your answer would be. And with that, I'll ask Mr. Phillips to go uh, and begin to call the role of the jurors. J.G. Please stand. Um, did you hear the verdict as it was read in open court? Yes, I have. Was that your verdict in the jury room? Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes, ma'am. And is it still your verdict? Yes, it is. Thank you. Please be seated. <coughs> Did you hear the verdict as it was read in open court? Yes, ma'am. Was we got, we'll get, Eventually, we'll be there. <laughs> yes, sir. Did you hear the verdict as it was read in open court? 
Was that your verdict in the jur jury room? Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Is it still your verdict? Thank you. Be seated. Did you hear the verdict as it was read in open court? Yes. Was that your verdict in the jury room? Yes. Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Please be seated. Yes. Did you hear the verdict as it was read in open court? Yes. Was that your verdict in the jury room? Yes. Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Did you hear the verdict as it was read in open court? Yes, Your Honor. Was that your verdict in the jury room? Yes, it was. Is it still your verdict? Yes, sir. Um, and was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you so much. P. E. Did you hear the verdict as it was read in open court? Yes. Was that the verdict of, was that your verdict in the jury room? Yes. Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Thank you. Did you hear the verdict as read in open court? Yes. Was that your verdict in the jury room? Yes. Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes. And is it still your verdict? Yes. Thank you. J. J. Did you hear the verdict as it was read? Two J. This is a male. Did you hear the verdict as it was read in open court? Was that your verdict in the jury room? Yes. Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. J R. Did you hear the verdict as it was read in open court? Yes, ma'am. Was that your verdict in the jury room? Yes, ma'am. Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes, ma'am. Is it still your verdict? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. G G. Did you hear the verdict as read in open court? Was that your verdict in the jury room? Yes, sir. Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes, sir. Is it still your verdict? Yes, sir. Did you hear the verdict as read in open court? Yes, I did. Was it your verdict in the jury room? Yes, it was. Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes, it was. Is it still your verdict? Yes, sir. Did you hear the verdict as read in open court? Was that your verdict in the jury room? Yes, ma'am. Was it the verdict of your fellow jurors? Yes. Is it still your verdict? Yes. Anything further from the state? No, Your Honor. Anything further from the defense? Not as far as the jury's concerned, Judge. We'll take up issues in a moment. Um, we're going to give the verdict to the clerk. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes your service on this case. Um, so, what are next steps? Well, I'll be uh, discharging you shortly, but I'd like you to know about the next steps in the case. Um, if, as you remember that I told you in uh, the charge of the court, I explained to you that sentencing was not an issue in uh, their jury deliberations. And that's because we have a bifurcated system of jury trials, and by means two, as you know. So the first step is the determination of guilt or innocence. You can't even begin to contemplate or consider or evaluate appropriate punishment until you've determined if a person is guilty or not guilty. And that is a jury function. That's where people from the community are brought together to bring about their really common sense. The verdict of a jury is the, the, the um, sense, the common word, sense of the 12 jurors who come from all different walks of life, evaluating evidence, applying law to evidence, and letting that create a verdict. But you can't talk about punishment until a person has been found guilty. It's, it doesn't make sense. Uh, in cases such as this, once a jury arrives at a verdict, and in this case a guilty verdict, then the responsibility of sentencing falls to the trial judge, and that's me. And what happens is called a um, sentencing hearing. And at a sentencing hearing, there can be evidence offered. And evidence would come to the court in one of two ways. Uh, 
basically two natures. One is in the nature of aggravation, and the other is in the nature of mitigation. Aggravating evidence is evidence that would take you to, say you had a median sentence, you know, that, that all things be equal, this would be the normal sentence in a case. Aggravating evidence would be that which takes you to a stronger uh, social response. Uh, punishment is a social response to behavior that's, that's against the law. And if there's evidence that's offered, and it can be evidence from the trial, maybe nothing more than, there, and often is, that there's no more evidence other than what's been heard at the trial. So that would, could be aggravating evidence. Uh, but it could also be something like uh, uh, prior criminal convictions, um, uh, other things of that nature that the law allows the sentencing judge to take into account in arriving at the appropriate punishment. The other type of evidence is mitigating evidence, and that which is where the meeting point takes you to a less harsh sentence. Um, youth is often considered to be mitig uh, mitigating. There can be evidence in the trial that amounts to mitigating evidence. Lack of a criminal record can be mitigating evidence. There's a hearing um, to accomplish that, and each side of the state can offer evidence and aggravation. The defense can offer evidence of, in mitigation. And then, just as you saw in the trial, uh, there's argument. Each side can state what they think is an appropriate sentence within uh, the, the range that the law sets out and argue to the court persuasively what's the appropriate sentence. I mentioned a, a feature that's important to keep in mind. Um, I don't have unfettered decision making, just like you did. You had law you had to follow based on evidence to arrive at a verdict. I have law I have to follow based on evidence and sentencing to arrive at a sentence. So what is the law specifically that I'm talking about? Uh, each offense uh, has uh, sentences that are set forth by statute. The law that I told you about when I define malice murder, when I define felony murder, when I define the cruelties to children and the dissemination counts, they all have ranges or specific punishments that go with that offense. And then there's some other nuanced aspects of how sentencing occurs. But um, after I discharge you, then I'll have to determine when uh, the sentencing will occur. And I'll certainly want to share that information with you. Um, you're a part of the case. Uh, I'm discharging you, and you're going to go back into your, your free lives, which you have not had for quite some time. And, you know, for the rest of us, too, we haven't had our free lives either. We've been here um, in a very uh, accommodating community. What's been uh, here for us uh, from Cobb County trying this case has been, hospitality has been remarkable. The support and help to us to do our task has been remarkable, and I hope for you that you find that to be true as well. I believe you probably do. It's just been very remarkable, and everyone involved um, should be commended. But to go back into your civic life and your civilian life, and yet I'm sure you would like to have the information so you can have access to uh, uh, being able to see and hear what happens in the sentencing, and uh, I will be sure to get that to you so you will know. Why am I saying that? I don't know yet when we're going to do it. I need to listen to both sides. That's the next step after I discharge you is to uh, listen to the lawyers and talk about next steps as to when we get to sentencing. What type of preparation do they need? What is their time frame? Sometimes you try cases when you immediately have a sentencing. Oftentimes you have to wait because there are witnesses that need to be summoned and brought into court. So there's, a, there's still moving parts on my end, and their end as well. Um, before I discharge you, I'd like to say to you that you've seen, in my opinion, very good trial work. The lawyers have done an outstanding job in representing Mr. Harris, and making sure that not only were his rights um, protected, and you know, sometimes you get a little jaded about rights, but rights matter because they define us as a, as a society. And um, if, heaven forbid, we ever find ourselves in a circumstance 
or our family in a circumstance. We want to make sure we live in a society where um, those rights protected to us are there for us. It's an equalizer. It makes us all equal under the law. And that's one of the hallmarks of American society. And you've seen very good lawyering in that regard. You've also seen very good development of the facts and circumstances. The presentation was very good. And I see lawyers all the time. I am one. <laughs> I'm pleased to be one. I'm very proud of the um, career choices I've made um, that have given me such an ability to see how our system works, how justice works in our country and in Georgia. And you've seen very high quality work, and I commend the lawyers for that. Um, having said that, I'm going to excuse you. I'm going to send you back to your jury room. The poor alternates, bless your hearts. What a, you must have, I, I can't, every time I have to tell somebody they're an alternate, I go, you know, this is as punishing to me as it is to them to say, yep, we made you sit here, yep, we made you listen, and now we're going to put you in a room, <laughs> and you're going to have to play whatever, you know, do whatever y'all were doing. And the frustration, you know, I'm very sensitive to it. We couldn't have tried the case without you. What if somebody got sick? I, 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 you would not believe. I, I was washing my hands every minute thinking, I do not need the flu. I got my shot. I don't need to get sick. And I was thinking, and you all don't need to be sick. Nobody needs to get sick. Um, so, but what if somebody had? You know it can happen. So we had to have the alternates for that. Um, you all have been a true pleasure to work with. You showed up on time. You've worked really hard. You've been attentive. All the things that I would say A++ jurors do, you all did. And I absolutely appreciate that very much. It's made it so much easier on all of us. Judges can't comment on verdicts, so if you, if you think I'm going to, I'm not. Your function. You all have acquitted yourselves uh, and, and worked hard and are greatly deserving of the hard work and attention, dedication that you've put to this. Send you back to your jury room. I think there will be probably some paperwork and follow-up. Traditionally, what is done is the lawyers and the judge come back just simply to answer any questions. Um, and if you've got a minute for the lawyers and you're comfortable with it, please do that. Um, I've been involved with juries my entire legal, uh, legal career. Um, I used to try cases, and win, lose, or draw, I always appreciated talking to the jurors. It made me a better lawyer. It made me a better person, a stronger person, better able to see many facets and aspects of things that through my life I wouldn't know about because I have my life. I don't have the benefit of other people's lives. But by talking and listening to other people, I found that I grew a lot and became much better as a lawyer, uh, as a judge, and as a human being. On the other hand, you may have had a plenty of us. And so if now is the time to take your paperwork and say so long, and I'm, I, we're not going to rush in on top of y'all. Y'all need to say goodbye to one another. You know, there's, there's got to be some de-escalation. There's got to be a moment to go and then shake hands and hug necks and say, you know, I enjoyed uh, breaking bread with you. I enjoyed knowing about your family. I enjoyed working with you. All those things that you all need to have a moment to do. And then once you've got your paperwork and you all had your moments together with each other. I'll spend that time working with lawyers to figure out when we'll be doing sentencing. Then if you, if you would like to leave, please do so. If you'd like to stay and, and, and um, have a chance to people that you've worked with so long to shake a hand or make a comment or share a thought, we'll step back with you for that as well. So with those comments, I'm going to excuse you to your jury room. Y'all take your time to decompress. Yep. Yes. Yes. Um, and Mr. Purdue, if you'll find out, I don't know if they need checks. I don't know. They're on their way. See, I am thinking. I believe they are forthcoming. I am. I am thinking of your best interest. Am I not? <laughs> Whether you've noticed it or not, that's been a primary concern of mine. 
So if you'll step out and we'll step back to see you in a moment and let you know what's we'll going right, on. Please. please watch your step going down. to the jury, I sincerely mean, gentlemen, you are tried a really good case. You've worked hard, and it's been well developed, and I need to say that to you all as well. Sentencing hearing, what says the state? Um, state will be ready whenever you're on. We do have to, I think, under the law, notify the next of kin and uh, victim and uh, the latter counts of the indictment for when sentencing is going to be set, but we'll, we'll try to do that as soon as we can, as soon as your honor set today. We're ready whenever. Defense? We're ready now. Well, they have to notify people. I don't see that as happening. Do you anticipate uh, the sentencing hearing to be? Uh, from the state's position, probably no more than 15, 20 minutes. And from the defense, do you have an estimation? Uh, we, will, we will be putting up no evidence or making any argument. Um, let's set for December the 5th at 1.30 in my courtroom in Cobb County. All right, we need to advise the defendant of his um, Appellate rights. Mr. Kilgore, I don't anticipate you've had an opportunity to discuss that with your client. They've been discussed at great length. Well, and uh, to so your credit, do you want to make a predicate statement of some sort? I do um, not. Well, what have you, well, okay, then what have you advised him of? That uh, if he's convicted, he has the right to appeal. You're going to take care of that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Well, then, um, Mr. Harris, your counsel has advised me that you all have discussed um, appellate issues uh, at length and that they are going to file the notices of appeal in a timely manner. Generally, that's going to be within 30 days, um, at least um, kind of a blanket notice of appeal uh, to be fleshed out at a later time. Would that be consistent with what you advised to Mr. That's, um, we went into a good bit more detail, but he's, he's aware of those rights that he has, and he's aware that we're going to be handling those in, in the proper fashion, Judge. Well, the thing that's important for me to tell Mr. Harris is that he's got 30 days to file a notice of appeal, and it can be very blanket and pro forma, but the 30 days is the deadline, and that's what needs to be said by the court. Mr. Harris, do you understand that? Yes, sir. All right, is there anything else for the state? No, Your Honor. Is there anything else for the defense? Not at this time, Judge. Um, you want to step back and see the jury? Oh, we would, Judge. I know we, we'd spoken about this earlier. I didn't, it, it, it may not be the best idea, but just a thought we had, possibly, so they don't feel pressure. If they wanted to come back maybe in the morning at, at, to the courthouse or meeting in a room or something like that to meet at maybe 8, 30, 9 o'clock if they're open to that way. Yeah. Just a thought. I'm inclined to say you. They'll say no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we would like a minute to speak with them if, if at all possible. Well, y'all just stay put and I'll work it out to where it's going to be best for everybody. Yes, ma'am. How about the defense? I think that um, one, at least one of us is probably going to want to speak to them. Perfect. All right. Um, Sheriff John, thank you so much for your officers and your outstanding um, um, hospitality. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. 
All right, I'm going to take a recess now, and I'm going to get the jury settled and figure out what's the best place. They may want to come in here, um, but I don't know that they're going to want to. Ladies and gentlemen, the press may not be who they're interested in. I don't know. You know, at this point, they're free agents. Let's let them have some freedom and some input into what we do. So I will go and work on that. This court stands in recess. heard the judge saying is that she's going to arrange an opportunity for both the defense and the prosecution to talk to the jury to find out what moved them in this trial, what motivated them. Uh, and we are going to try to do the same. Our Claire Sims is on the scene. So is Angelique Proctor. We're going to try to talk to the jury. Of course, they're free not to talk to us, but we'll ask them uh, what it was that convinced them of Ross Harris's guilt. Let's toss back to Claire. Yeah, Russ, well, one of the things that we've been seeing throughout the jury deliberation, uh, let me give you a little bit of the timeline. The jury was actually given this case and began deliberating last Tuesday, November 8th, the same day as Election Day. Um, they only worked a half day that day so that they could go and vote in the presidential election. Then they came back and worked a full day Wednesday, a full day on Thursday, and then were off court for Friday for Veterans Day. They came back this morning, and we heard from people throughout the courthouse. Last week, uh, we reported that we saw a juror who was actually crying and had um, fellow jurors sort of comforting her during a break here at the courthouse. Today, court administrators told us that things seemed a little more subdued. They heard last week maybe a little more arguing in the jury room. Today, it was more subdued, more calm. And again, uh, now I guess we believe that that was because they were closer to making a determination and, of course, agreeing at this point on all eight counts and finding Ross Harris guilty. So we had a half day of deliberation last Tuesday, two full days, Wednesday and Thursday, and then a little bit more than a half day of deliberation today before the jury was able to reach a consensus on all eight counts. And one of the things that we saw last week is the jurors did ask to review some of the evidence, and they had had most of the evidence in their jury room, but when it came to electronic evidence in this case, they had to review that in the courtroom under supervision. So we saw them rewatch the interview of Ross Harris uh, the first day after this happened him being interviewed by Cobb County Police Detective Phil Stoddard. We saw him sitting in the room alone and one of the big questions that the prosecution put in the jurors' minds was, was his, um, were his emotions sincere on the day that his son died? And it, it seemed apparent to us that the jurors were re-watching that video to watch Mr. Harris in that interrogation room by himself or in that interview room um, to see if they could gauge his emotions. So they not only watched the interview with Detective Stoddard again. They also went back and watched when Leanna Harris, now Leanna Taylor, Harris's former wife, visited him just hours after uh, Cooper's death. And, and were their interactions sincere? They also went back and watched the video of Harris dropping off light bulbs at his car. Now, you may remember during this story, Harris went to lunch with some co-workers, stopped by Home Depot to pick up some light bulbs, and then at lunch was spotted on surveillance camera. The prosecution said he just sort of tossed those light bulbs into the car because he didn't want to look into the car because he knew what was in there. The jury rewatched that video so that they could determine if the prosecution's theory on that was correct. And at this point, with all of these uh, guilty verdicts, it sounds as though the jury did agree with the prosecution's version of this case. Russ? Very, very well said. And that means that 
Ross Harris intended to do this, planned to do this from the very beginning. Uh, that's what malice murder means, as you know, first degree murder. They could have convicted him uh, of felony murder with criminal negligence. He still would have spent life in prison. But this jury eventually came to the conclusion, did it not, that this was a plan from the very beginning, something he thought out and that he left his child to die there intentionally. Yeah, and that was the prosecution's uh, story sort of the whole, uh, the whole time. They claimed that Harris uh, was living a double life, that he was married with a young son, but he was also meeting women online or on social media apps, um, meeting up with them for sex and for other rendezvous and really sort of leading this double life. Now, the prosecution claimed that by getting rid of his son, Cooper, that he was potentially able to escape his responsibilities as a husband and a father. But of course, the defense said he loved that little boy. He, the defense brought evidence that he was planning a vacation with the family and that the family was looking for a larger home. And But the prosecution was able to, in their closing, sort of knock down some of those um, theories that the defense presented to the jury. Well, the defense attorney, Maddox Kilgore, told the jury Eccentricities and moral failures do not change the fact that this was an accident. And accidents like this do happen all over the country, three dozen times a year on average. But clearly this jury did not believe that in this particular case, and the defense tried to say, look, this is about demeanor. Had Ross Harris not acted strangely on the day of his son's death, none of this would have happened in court. Uh, but clearly the, the jury sided with the prosecution. Uh, and vindicated their decision to bring what were very unusual murder charges under the circumstances. Yeah, exactly. And I remember, you know, that we watched that video again with Leanna Harris in the interview room with her husband saying, what did you say? Why have they charged you? What are you being charged with? Really not understanding exactly um, what the extent of this would be. but. Um, that was a big question. I remember when this first um, happened that people were saying they weren't sure if this was criminal. Um, obviously, the jury here in Glynn County, Georgia today uh, believes that it was. Claire Sims live in Glynn County. Thank you so much. So this is justice for Cooper Harris. The sentencing again will happen on December 5th back in Cobb County, 1.30 in the afternoon uh, in Judge Mary Staley Clark's courtroom. It will be life in prison. Uh, the question is life plus how much? And we heard Maddox Kilgore, the defense attorney for Ross Harris, say that they will appeal. Uh, they have 30 days to file that appeal, so perhaps this is not over, but at least for today. Uh, justice has been served. Uh, we heard the, the judge say that this was good lawyering on both sides, that the lawyers for the prosecution and the defense did their jobs. It is guilty on all counts, including the most serious, malice murder, uh, Georgia's equivalent of first-degree murder, the death penalty off the table. We're going to try to talk to the jury and have complete coverage for